Hello and welcome. My name is Mr. J.M. Kimani, your lecturer in management accounting. Welcome to the topic standard costing. Now, uh, in this topic, we look at uh, the definition of the standard cost, the standard costing, looking at uh, the uh, aspects and the steps of uh, standard costing, looking at the types of uh, standard costing, as well as looking at the basic variances, especially the operating variances. Now, in lesson one, uh, looking at all that uh, before we look at the variances in uh, the other uh, lessons. So we are going to look at the definition of standard cost and standard costing. Now, uh, standard cost is a planned unit of cost of a product or a service or components produced in a period. The standard cost may be determined on a number of bases. The main use of standard costs are in performance measurement, control, inventory, valuation, and in establishment of selling prices. Now, we are saying that um, standard cost is just a way of um, determining the cost of producing a product, providing a service, and in this case, we are able to know the, the, the price. So, it is after uh, consolidating the aspects of cost, the elements of cost, that we are able to know the cost of producing uh, a product. For example, like you don't know the material cost, the labor cost, the variable overhead, the fixed overheads, all these comprised together uh, make now the standard cost. And actually it is using the predetermined or budgeted uh, ideas, the budgeted uh, materials, budgeted labor, so that we can be able to set the price. This is done before the actual happening, and that's why it is being used in budgeting. Now, uh, it can also be defined as control technique, which compares standard costs and um, revenues with actual results to obtain variances, which are to stimulate improved performance. Standard costing is a control technique that uses standard costs and revenues as a yardstick for measuring actual performance. Now, we are saying that standard costing is that now practice or that exercise of comparison, comparing what was predicted or what was budgeted or planned and what actually has been achieved. Like you can compare the uh, cost that has, was budgeted to be spent and the actual cost that has actually been incurred. And therefore, that comparison is what you are referring to as standard costing. It is that benchmarking, that uh, using the standard cost as the benchmark or as a yardstick for comparison and for measuring the actual performance. How will you know that uh, you are performing well? How will you know that uh, you are actually out of, you're not within the, the schedule? It is actually by, first of all, use having some standard set. And that's what we call standard costing. So that now you can be able to make some comparison and this will assist you in your progress. Now, uh, steps. These are steps to follow. So steps in standard costing. One, setting the standards both for the item cost as well as for the revenue. Two, Comparing the actual cost with the standard cost and actual revenue with the standard revenue. Three, calculating the variance, if any, that is identifying whether or not the actual performance or uh, deviates from the desired level. Number four, analyzing and investigating the reason for the variance, that is to make the exercise uh, cost effective, only the significant variance uh, should be investigated. Uh, five, taking the effective action, either by improving uh, the actual performance, if the performance is not up to the mark, or by revising the standards if, the, if they were set at a level that is unachievable for any reason. Now, those steps in understanding uh, the whole procedure, that first of all, we need to set the standards in terms of the price. And uh, in terms of the cost, that is. Eh? So that now you can be able to make a comparison. Remember, we want the cost and even uh, the price uh, of uh, what we want to produce. Now, 
having set the standard, uh, the, the cost and the price, we can be able now to make a comparison with the actual. And that's why we are comparing in the step number two, the cost and the revenue. Comparing the standard cost and the actual cost, get the difference or get to know uh, such deviation. Get also to know about the revenue, the income achieved and the income that was uh, planned and so that you're able to understand or to analyze uh, that um, uh, difference, be it about the cost, be it about the price and be it um, a favorable variance, be it an unfavorable variance. Also, uh, that uh, investigation so that now you can be able to make some corrective action. Otherwise, if you don't investigate, you may not be able to know what exactly is causing this variance. Sometimes you may record a variance, a particular variance, let's say like a, a, a favorable variance, always. So if you report such variance and same variance in every period, there must be a problem. You need to understand what is happening. Is it the actual? Is it the budget? So you must do some investigation that you can be able to take some corrective action. And this corrective action we are saying is either the actual or the budgeted performance. If your budget is okay, then the actual is a problem. But if actually the um, budget is not okay, that uh, it has been set uh, using a lot of uh, optimism, a lot of pessimism, then of course it will never be achieved or either it will be achieved with a lot of ease. So that's why we need to be, to be revising this budget every now and then. In any case, the periods are not the same and uh, we may even stop producing a particular product and we start another uh, version of that product, which means that we need to revise our standards. That is something to note. Those uh, steps are very important. Now, standard costs are predetermined cost uh, per unit that should be achieved under predetermined conditions. Now, this one I had explained that um, the standard costs are just costs that are, have been uh, estimated in advance. So we are predicting, we are estimating, we are planning, we are budgeting that this is the cost we are going to spend. And actually, it may or may not be the, the cost to be spent because the actual position or the actual conditions may not be the same same conditions prevailing. Uh, just like those uh, that we are at the time of preparing the budgets. Now, the usefulness of uh, standard costing, which are the importance of standard costing. One, uh, planning. Two, control and performance measurement. Three, empowerment and change. Four, decision making. And five, alternative method of valuation. So these are the, the importance So we have um, uh, five in number. We have uh, the planning, very important. We have the control and performance measurement, of course, and performance measurement. We also have uh, improvement and, uh, and change. And change. We have uh, the decision making. Decision making. And we have uh, the alternative method evaluation. Alternative method of valuation among others and among others eh? now the first one which is a planning now standard costs are the building blocks for budgeting which is an op op which is an operational planning tool setting standards for any cost revenue or volume of activity is the first step in uh, devising a budget that's true we said that um, when it come to planning and for you to make, have a good plan then you need to have these uh, standards. That if you are able to uh, attach a particular cost that is predetermined, that is going to be spent, then that is the starting point. In any case, you cannot have a plan if you don't have where to go. It's like saying you have a way, but you don't know where that way is leading you. So standards is now setting like uh, this is where I want to reach. Then now you come to the way. How do I get there? So we are first of all demarcating our limits our expectations, 
those are now the standards. But now from there, we can come to the plans and have the way of achieving those targets. So first of all, setting targets is the first thing. And that is uh, the, uh, let's say, the foundation of planning. Two is about the control and uh, performance measurement. Standard costs act as benchmark uh, by establishing standards for comparison with actual performance by analyzing variances in order to evaluate the level of achievement and to fix responsibility for variances, if any. It is critical, uh, uh, it is critical to decide whether to set standards at an ideal level or at an achievable level. That's true. You see that um, for control and performance measurement, in any case, I normally say that it is so difficult and it may not be possible for you to control what you never planned. If you go to, maybe you go for shopping, you don't have a shopping list. Whatever you pick may not be compared with what you wanted because you don't have already the list of what you wanted. So you can't control yourself uh, to, uh, from picking but if you have a shopping list, whatever you'll be picking, you'll be able to control yourself because you're comparing with what you had uh, budgeted and planned and having a shopping list. So it is hard to control what never planned. Therefore, this is also very vital. Uh, it is an imp it's one of the importance of uh, standard costing that uh, you are able to do control uh, measurement or control, uh, control measurement if actually you have uh, such standards. Performance measurement. How do you get to know whether somebody has performed or not performed? You're able to attach appraisal if you have the set standards so that you can compare with the actuals. That is something to know. So this is very important and actually enables a company to uh, gauge whether it is on schedule or either it is operating uh, beyond or below. Then uh, improvement and change is number three. That improvement and change in performance can be achieved by monitoring variances over a period of time. Monitoring variances provides a good insight in the prevailing conditions of the environment factors that might have caused changes in the performance. Variance analysis also provide information on the controllability of cost, which help in improving performance. A standard has a direct impact on the level of motivation of employees. Performance levels may be improved by setting a standard slightly higher than the achievable uh, standard and thereby inducing the employees to achieve the, news, uh, the new standard. That's true. We are saying that um, when it comes come to improvement and change, uh, standards make or shows changes. If our current standards are different from the previous standards, that shows there is a change. If we are able to achieve a particular standard and next time we increase the standard a bit, that means there's a change. In any case, also the, uh, the motivation of employees is achieved when there's some challenge a bit. You don't set your targets or your standards so low that they achieve, the employees achieve within a very short time. Something that is challenging, is, is, it gives them some motivation. And when they achieve it, they find uh, some uh, pleasure in them. But if they, do, they are... They achieve it very simply. There's, there's no pleasure there. So there is much pleasure and uh, motivation if uh, there is that uh, shifting of uh, goals in some, some cases where if you're able to achieve a very short time, then next time you improve it, you increase it a bit. If the budgets were set so ideal that they become unachievable, then you need to reduce them a bit so that at least uh, it becomes some, just somehow challenging. Not impossible, but become challenging for uh, the employees to achieve. So therefore, it is uh, one of the advantages or importances of standard costing uh, to create or to bring in change uh, or measure the change. Then number four is decision making. Standard cost from, uh, form the basis of ascertaining the cost of a new product and for uh, notifying the future prof uh, profitability of a product. Standard costs are also used in determining the price of a product or a job or a service. That's true. Now, you're saying that uh, you are able to make decision whether you should proceed or you should stop. If the standard shows that um, it is going to be so high and, and also unachievable, we are going to decide to leave it. 
But if from the standard it shows that uh, we can achieve it, then you are going to actually um, start the process uh, with that uh, in mind that we are going to achieve it. So actually it's like saying that when you budget in advance, you are able to make decision whether to follow and execute the budget or you just stop it. So sometimes we may plan, but we do not actually take off because already you can make a decision that is not possible. But when we see it is possible, then of course uh, we are making a decision uh, in favor of it. Of it. Number five, lastly, is that um, alternative method of valuation. Eh? Standard costing provides alternative method of, uh, of valuing inventory, such as uh, the first in, first out, last in, first out, and the weighted average methods, and cost of production. Standards are suitable for an organization whose uh, activities involve common or repetitive operations and where the materials and um, components, parts of products can be specified. Standards are normally set at ideal level to reflect perfect performance under efficient operating conditions. Now, let me explain about alternative method of valuation. For example, like if you are valuing the stocks, the normal a specific, specific identification method is where we just attach the same cost of the product. And, and when we are issuing, we normally either use the first in, first out, which is FIFO, uh, last in, first out, or the weighted average. Now, we're saying that uh, we can come up with, um, with an alternative uh, method where we just set a particular price or cost. Is that um, everything that we are going to be issuing from our store irrespective of its original cost, we are going to issue it at a particular price, which we call standard price. So you have said that is a policy that from our store to the user departments, the price shall be this. Just like um, some cases of uh, transfer price. Sometimes you may want to create some um, autonomy between the store and the production department so that now uh, we can be having some... Um, uh, sharing of profits between the stores and the production. That tells you that um, when you set a price which will be the basis of issuing these materials from the store to the purchasing or the production department, then of course that is what we're calling the standard price or standard cost. And it's an alternative method of stock valuation. <laughs>